Hi, my name is Juliana Reinecke. I'm a professor of international management and sustainability at King's College London at the Business School. I'm also a research fellow at the Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership and a fellow at the Judge Business School at the University of Cambridge. And my research is very much centered on transnational governance. I'm very interested in how corporations work together with other actors in the, in the supply chain with um, NGOs, civil society organizations to improve labor and environmental practices um, in their supply chains in particular. I'm now just about to start a new research projects together with colleagues at um, Copenhagen Business School on making distant futures actionable and how corporations can respond to climate change. So I think the questions um, that are being asked are of great relevance to my own research. Yeah, I hope you can join us on October the 7th for just a wonderful and very, very important um, series of conversations we are going to have. We have had COP, the Conference of Parties events, since the first one in Berlin in 1995. So now we are entering into COP26. So we've already had 26 major conferences. And early on, we really saw some, you know, some light moments. The Kyoto Protocol that established um, or that committed industrial countries to legally binding greenhouse gas emissions was concluded in 1997. We had the Paris Agreement in 2015. That was widely believed to be a landmark agreement that established a legal framework for climate action, also goals to limit global average temperature rise um, to below two degrees Celsius, ideally to below 1.5 degrees. But all agreements are only as good as their implementation. And that's, I think, where a lot of frustration is coming from, that we have this agreement, we have that consensus at a global level that we need to do something, but we haven't seen the action that is really needed to implement these agreements. Um, and I think that's really the challenge. So, you know, why is this the case? I mean, first of all, climate change is really a difficult challenge. It's a transnational collective action dilemma. We would all benefit from climate action, but unless everyone contributes, our individual contribution as consumer, as a company, um, as a government, seems too marginal to create change. So it's really important that everybody contributes, but that's also the challenge. The second big challenge is that climate change really is the question of temporal scale. The worst effects of climate change are going to occur at some point in the future. So that seems to be something distant. It's not, it's not um, easy to grasp for um, what is the, you know, what concerns us here now. There always seems to be something more immediate. So COP26, I think we will see what the outcomes will be. But I think a very um, important factor, events always play into an existing context. And the, we see really see the context has changed. I would say that's what I see, that what research um, shows us. So we've had the um, 2021 IPCC report that again confirms that humans are responsible for the climate crisis, that reiterates that we only have a very, very limited time window to take radical action, um, strong action, bold measures to limit global warming to below 1.5 or below 2 degrees Celsius. Otherwise, um, this goal will really be beyond reach. We also have seen Fridays for Future, Extinction Rebellion, movements, citizens rising up and really demanding climate action from their governments. Um, there's, and I think what is also interesting that this demand really comes from the young generation. There was a new global survey by Bath University with the campaign group Avas and other universities that showed that almost 60% um, of people said they were very worried or extremely worried about climate change. And the next element, of course, is the corona crisis that we've seen where we saw that a tiny little creature, a virus, can upset our lives and livelihoods. So I think there's a very, very different context where I think there is demand and appetite there for action. But I think now it's really about we know what the agreements are. We have that consensus. What we now really need are the actions to implement the agreements and to make the investment into the future to mitigate the worst effects of, um, of climate change.